Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. We're given two congruent rectangles packed into a square, and it's asking for the measure of this angle. This is day six of the 2025 Advent calendar. How are you guys doing? I am way behind schedule. I had a pretty crazy week this week, and this one took me quite a while to figure out. Check out the length of the video. This is probably gonna be a long one. And if you wanna try it on your own, pause it right now, because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. Since we're trying to solve for an angle, let's focus on some of the other angles. This one is a right angle because it's part of a square. This is a right angle because it's part of a rectangle. And this is a right angle because it's on the edge of this rectangle. And let's call this angle theta. In a right triangle, the angles always add up to 180 degrees. So we know that question mark plus 90 plus theta equals 180. And then it's also true that these three would add up to 180 degrees. So we can say question mark plus 90 plus plus theta equals 180 degrees. And then we can do the same thing to get this last angle. Since there's 180 degrees in this triangle, it'll be question mark plus 90 plus theta equals 180. And then we can find the rest of these angles by doing the exact same logic. And now we have labels for a whole bunch of angles. Next, we can focus on side lengths. Let's call this height of the rectangle and also the height of the square H. And then since these rectangles are congruent, this would also be H, and this one too. And then let's call the base of our rectangle B, and that means that this would also be B, and this up here would also be B. And then let's label this piece from here to here X, and we'll call this from here to here Y. And then this up here will also be X and Y. And the reason for that is angle side angle theorem. So since this triangle is congruent to this triangle, this side would be X and this side would be Y. I hope that makes sense why. And then let's call this last side Z, which means this last side would also be Z. And then let's do this right here. The whole height is equal to H, this piece is equal to X, so this remaining portion would be H minus X. So now we basically have labels for all the sides and all the angles. I don't know if we're gonna need it all, but we've got it taken care of. Now something else really cool, we have no scale factor here. So we have the freedom to assign a value to one of these variables. We could label this side length H1, and all the H's would be equal to one. Or we could make them all five. Or we could make all these B's one, or we could make the B's two, or we could do the X's as one, the Y's is one, or the Z's is one. I don't know which of those are going to be best, so let's wait till later to see if we need it. For now, let's just leave everything as variables. For the next step, let's focus on these two triangles. Since these two triangles have three corresponding sets of congruent angles, we know they are similar. That means we can make a proportion. We can do medium side over hypotenuse equals medium side over hypotenuse. That'll be y over b is equal to h minus x over h. I'm not sure what's best with this. Let's just get the y alone. Let's multiply both sides by b. On the left-hand side, we'll be left with y. And on the right-hand side, we'll have b times times the quantity h minus x over h. And then from here, oh, this is cool. We can actually plug in for this y all of that stuff. And for this y, we'll plug in all that stuff. That's actually pretty cool. We got rid of one of the variables. So now we're basically done with y. Let's try another proportion using the exact same triangles. This time, let's do the short side over the hypotenuse equals the short side over the hypotenuse. That'll be z over h equals x over b. And now let's do the same thing. Let's solve for the z so we can substitute for this z. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by h. On the left-hand side, we'll be left with z and on the right hand side we'll have hx all over b and now we can change this z into hx over b and this z into hx over b and now we can clean things up a little bit we don't need this anymore and i don't think we're going to need the angles anymore now for the next step let's do the pythagorean theorem with this triangle down here it'll be this squared plus this squared is equal to this squared for the first term this squared can go to each of these so it'll be b squared the quantity h minus x squared over h squared. And then we can copy down everything else. And then for the next step, this quantity h minus x squared means the same thing as h minus x times h minus x. And if we multiply this out, we get h squared minus 2xh plus x squared. And then from here, we could distribute the b squared, but I just realized we have a fraction here. I don't really like fractions, so let's get rid of this fraction by multiplying both sides of the equation by h squared. For all of this, the h squared and the h squared will cancel each other out. But we still 
still have an h squared that's gonna be multiplied by this x squared. And now I'm ready to distribute this to all of these. So we have b squared h squared minus b squared 2xh plus b squared x squared. And then we can add to that h squared x squared, and that'll be equal to b squared h squared. And then from here, both sides of the equation have a b squared h squared. So let's subtract b squared h squared from both sides. On the left-hand side, these will cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, we'll have zero. And then in most of my videos, I would typically factor out an x but I get a lot of comments saying I should just divide by x. In this scenario, since we know x is not zero, it is safe to divide by x, so I don't mind just doing that. After we divide by x, the first term will be negative b squared 2h, this term would be b squared x, and this term would be h squared x. And then on the right-hand side, zero divided by x is zero. Now from here, I wanna solve for one of the variables. It's gonna be easiest to solve for x. Let's get all the x's alone on one side. This term doesn't have an x anywhere, so let's add it to both sides. On the left-hand side, these will cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, we'll have b squared 2h. Now for the next step, each of these contains an x, so let's factor out an x. b squared x divided by x gives us b squared. And then we can add to that h squared x divided by x, which is h squared. And we can leave the right-hand side alone. Now to get this x by itself, we can divide both sides by b squared plus h squared. And we end up with x is equal to b squared 2h over b squared plus h squared. And now we have x. Let's clean all this up and bring this up here. Ideally, I would substitute in the place of all of these x's. I'd put this right here. But I don't think I'm going to be able to fit it in the diagram, so let's just put a box around it. And now we can find another equation. This height is equal to h, and this is a square, so that means this base is also equal to h. So we can say the base of h is equal to this plus this plus this. And now we can play around with this. Let's copy this down here and move the x over. And in the place of the x, let's plug in all of this. Let's take this b and distribute it to each of these so it'll become bh minus bx. And then we can split this into two separate fractions. It'll become bh over h minus bx over h. For the left fraction, this h and this h can cancel each other out. And we'll be left with b. And now this b can combine with this b to give us 2b. Let's smush everything together and see what we can do next. We can rewrite this b squared as b times b, and we can cancel out one of these b's with this b down here. And then we can take this h and move it inside here, and h times h is h squared. And then what should we do next? We still have an x right here. So let's rearrange things a little bit so in the place of this x, we can plug in all of this. And now we can simplify this. This h on top with this h on bottom can cancel each other out. And this b times b squared will give us b cubed. And now I think this is fully simplified. Let's see what we can do with this. Now we have two b's, two b squareds, and a b cubed. I think we should use that trick now. I'm gonna make all the b's equal to one. So this b can scale up or down and it's not gonna change the size of our angle. So it's not gonna have any effect on the angle if we make this b equal to one. But I think it's gonna make our calculations a whole lot easier. For this first term, two times one is equal to two. And then in the place of this b, we can plug in one and one cubed is equal to one, so it'll just disappear. And the same thing is gonna to happen to this b. If it's equal to one, it'll disappear. And then we can set this b equal to one and one squared is equal to one, but this one is not gonna disappear. On bottom, we'll have one plus h squared. And same thing here, this will change into one, one squared is one, and we have one plus h squared. And now we have two fractions. Let's get rid of these fractions. We can multiply both sides of the equation by one plus h squared. On the left-hand side, this h will distribute to each of these terms. We'll have h plus h cubed. And then on the right-hand side, this one plus h squared will distribute to the two. So it'll be one times two is two plus h squared times two, which is two h squared. And then we're gonna subtract this times this term. Well, the top and bottom will cancel. We'll just have a two. And then the same thing will happen with this one. The top and bottom will cancel. So we'll have plus two h squared. And now from here, let's combine like terms. We can rearrange these. And then two minus two is zero. So this will all cancel out. And two h squared plus two h squared is four h squared. Let's smush everything together and set it all equal to zero. Let's subtract 4h squared from both sides. On the left-hand side, we'll be left with h cubed minus 4h squared plus h, and on the right-hand side, we'll have zero. Now from here, I would usually factor out the h, but then once again, so many people comment that I could just divide by h. So let's just do that. We know for sure h is not zero, so it is safe to divide by h. So this is what I would normally do. 
this is what we're going to do. Both of these are totally fine. On the left-hand side, each of these terms are going to divide by h. h cubed divided by h is h squared. Negative 4h squared divided by h is negative 4h, and h divided by h is positive 1. And then on the right-hand side, 0 divided by h is 0. I ran out of room, and I don't think I need any of this stuff anymore, so let's clean this up and bring this up here. And now we can solve for h. I usually do quadratic formula. Let's change things up a little bit and complete the square. Let's subtract 1 from both sides, and that'll give us h squared minus 4h equals negative 1. And then to complete the square, I'm going to put plus space on the left side and the right side. In order to complete the square, I like to cut this number in half, and then we want to square this number. The quantity negative 2 squared is equal to 4, so we want to put 4 in this place. And then to keep things balanced in this place, we're going to put 4. Now the whole reason I wrote the negative 2 down here is all of this changes into h minus 2 squared. And that's why it's called complete the square, is we completed this to make this a perfect square. And then on the right-hand side, negative 1 plus 4 is equal to 3. If you didn't quite understand what I did here, the process is called completing the square. There's probably thousands of videos showing how to complete the square. I'm pretty sure I have a couple of videos I made a couple years ago as well. Now from here, the next step is to square root both sides. On the left-hand side, we'll be left with h minus 2. And on the right-hand side, we have the possibility of positive root 3 or negative root 3. Next, to get the h by itself, let's add 2 to both sides. And we end up with h is equal to 2 plus or minus root 3. Let's play around with this. This plus or minus means we have the plus version or the minus version. And these are approximately equal to 3.73 or 0 0.27. Now looking up here, h has to be larger than b. And we have assigned b equal to 1. So 3.73, that looks reasonable. But the 0.27 is not going to be possible. This h has to be greater than 1. So this one is not a valid solution. So we end up with h is equal to 2 plus root 3. And now that we have b and h, we can figure out x. Each of these b's can change into 1. On top, this 1 squared will disappear, and on bottom, the 1 squared will become 1. And then in the place of each of the h's, we can plug in 2 plus root 3. On top, this 2 will distribute to each of these, giving us 4 plus 2 root 3. And on bottom, this squared means this times this. And after we multiply all of this out, we get this. And then we can combine like terms. 1 plus 4 plus 3 is equal to 8. And then from here, let's rationalize this denominator. We can do that by multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate. On top, we end up with 32 minus 16 root 3 plus 16 root 3 minus 8 times 3, which is equal to 24. And then on bottom, we end up with 64 minus 32 root 3 plus 32 root 3 minus 16 times 3, which is 48. And then we can combine like terms again. This negative 16 root 3 and positive 16 root 3 will cancel each other out. And then on bottom, the negative 32 root 3 and positive 32 root 3 will also cancel each other out. So we're left with 32 minus 24 over 64 minus 48. 32 minus 24 is equal to 8 and 64 minus 48 is equal to 16. And eight over 16 is equal to one half. And we now have values for all of our variables. Let's focus on this triangle that contains the question mark. In the place of this b, let's plug in one, so the denominator will disappear. And then we can switch the x and h, and let's plug in one half for the x. So now to solve for the question mark, we can take the cosine of question mark. It'll be cosine of question mark is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, or in other words, one half h over h. The h's will cancel each other out, giving us the cosine of question mark is equal to one half. We can take the cosine inverse or the arc cosine sign of both sides, which will give us question mark is equal to 60 degrees. Or you can also use the unit circle and we'd get 60 degrees. So everything is pointing to question mark equals 60 degrees. That is the answer to our question. Let's put a box around it. How exciting. I apologize for falling behind schedule. As you can see, this one took me quite a while. If you know of an easier way, please let me know in the comments. I really want to see an easier method. And I'll try to get caught up with the rest of the calendar as soon as possible. And this is the question for day seven. We're given a parallelogram with this side of five this diagonal of 10, and the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is equal to 90 degrees. And it's asking what is the area of this parallelogram. This looks like a fun one, and this is the first I've looked at this one. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. How exciting. 